How's it going? Welcome back to another Paul on Mars. Uh, today's video shall not be a DJ set. Amen. <laughs> it's going to be returning to our roots in Bible study. Uh, I know I haven't done a Bible study video in a while. Well, that's about to change today. So, what I want to talk about is context. <laughs> And what I mean by context is, as it, I mean it, talking about our study of God's holy word, his holy Bible, <clears throat> we have to, as we go through these scriptures, it's important that we know the context of what's being said, uh, who's saying it. We have over 60 authors involved in the writing of uh, the holy Bible. <clears throat> this took place over 3,500 years, the writing of this holy book. Um, that's a big time frame, and it covers all the way from the uh, creation of everything that exists all the way to um, eternity. So that's a lot. That's a lot. So when we're reading the word and we come upon scriptures, uh, verses um, that God uses to speak to us and to um, build us up and to edify us and to teach us things, it's important that we know, one, uh, who's talking at the, that point in the Bible, two, what they're talking about, three, where they're coming from, for what's going on in, in, the, in the story. I mean, there's so much involved in every word, every line of the scripture. And it's important that we um, understand this and we spend enough time to know what we're reading. Because when we, some of these scriptures, when you try to apply them to your life, you try and apply them to the world we live in, or the church, or the times we live in. It's important that you have the context. And so uh, the easiest way to demonstrate how important that is, is to show you where people have screwed it up. Because it's not that big of a reach to go from taking things out of context to creating your own uh, gospel, your own Jesus, uh, frankly, um, creating your own heresy. So context matters in um, the theological term would be hermeneutics, which is the uh, study and the process of applying proper context at all times. Uh, um, every bit of your understanding of the word is in um, proper context. Amen. And so one thing I want to do at the end is of this video is demonstrate how to take something out of context uh, properly. <laughs> I know that it seems like it's uh, like a double negative, like I'm speaking against myself. So Let's just get back to what I mentioned a moment ago. We could mention some of the people who have taken things out of context. The first group I'm thinking about would be those TV preachers. Uh, you know the ones who have been on TV for decades and decades now. Most of them have tens of hundreds of millions of dollars that people have given to them. They say things like, uh, uh, send in your love offering to me and uh, I'm gonna me and my team's gonna pray a special prayer over you or uh, send in your offerings to me because God has told me he wants me to fly around in a 70 million dollar private jet and you know the groups I'm talking about and let me tell you something about uh, these groups some of the key scriptures they rely on for their false gospel their false ministry are in the bible they really are the problem is they've taken them out 
of the proper context. Another group you could uh, point to would be these NAR guys, uh, New Apostolic Reformation. You can find these people on TV as well. Uh, you can pin this group down by um, saying one of their key beliefs is that Jesus is going to return. Of course he is. But uh, it isn't going to happen until um, prophets and apostles are in leadership roles throughout the church all over the world. So one, uh, you're going to have to have these uh, apostles which according to my study the word uh, we don't have those anymore that ended with uh, the Apostle John but I'm, I'm not gonna get deeply into either any of these groups I'm just giving you some examples you can study it for yourself <clears throat> so these NAR guys believe that uh, one, that there's all these new prophets and, and apostles on the earth right now. And it's our job to put them in charge of the churches. And then God's going to give special prophecies to these prophets and special authority to these apostles to usher in the return of Jesus Christ. Now, let me tell you something about that group. Some of the scriptures that are key to their ministry are in the Bible. They really are. The problem is they've taken them out of context. Um, and they've taken so many of them out of context that they've there's no other way to describe it but that they've created their own false gospel, their own false ministry, their own heresy. So... What other groups are out there that could uh, be an example of bad hermeneutics or taking things out of context? You could talk about these new progressive Christians. I saw one the other day. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I've, I've been watching this guy a, a little bit for a while now. I'm not going to be naming people in this video, but... What he said, some, I mean, he, he just can't help but say outrageous things. But one of the things he said uh, in his latest one, he was talking about Lazarus, a friend of Jesus that had died. Uh, you remember when Jesus went to the tomb four days after Lazarus had died and been buried and said, Lazarus, come out. And then Lazarus came walking out that tomb, still wearing the um, the wrappings that they put on someone uh, who gets in tune. Well, this progressive Christian guy, he says that when Jesus said, come out, that's actually reference to the LGBTQ, I'm just going to be nice, that's all the letters and that I know are, are plus or whatever. That's a reference to them to, to come out the closet. Amen. This, this is what he says. This is key to his um, version of proper context in the Bible. And this is not, this is not as uncommon as you think. Uh, this is a growing thing happening in the church right now these progressive christians who are just going through the bible with hatchets and machetes and just chopping it up and trying to say that it says things that it absolutely does not say another example so i think i've covered enough groups there's some more that i was thinking about i'm just gonna leave those alone i think these groups can give us a good um, understanding of why it is so important to know the context of the scripture when we're reading it. So that said, I promised that I was going to give an example of how to take something out of context. And, uh, and so that's what I'm going to do now. And the reason I'm doing this is because 
you know, sometimes you're just sitting here studying the Word. And, and God literally speaks to you through what you're reading. And, and it doesn't matter how many times you read it. Um, I, I spoke to Brother Sam Jones before he died. And at the time, he was like 80 years old, been preaching for like seven decades. Um, and we were sitting at, his, at a table at his house. And he was looking at the Bible and he was saying, I've been reading this book for 70 years. I've read it cover to cover countless times. And I'm still learning new things in the same verses that I've read um, so many times. And what he means by that, what he meant by that, was that God can speak to you through the reading of his word. Amen. That's the number one way. That God is ever going to speak to you through the reading of his holy word. And sometimes, you know, um, you can know the context of, of the scriptures you're reading. And God can, God can personally uh, apply that uh, in a way that speaks to you, usually just for you. Amen? And so that's what happened to me recently. And uh, I was reading about... Uh, the return of Jesus Christ. This is like the end of the tribulation period when Jesus literally returns to the earth. And I know there's a lot of disagreement over this. And that's why um, I wanted to use it in this video. Because you are going to encounter some legitimate disagreements in the word in the true church. Amen. There's a reason our churches have different names on them, and it's uh, it's it's not going to be like that in heaven, thank God. But the reason is these scriptures can be challenging, and um, you can study, spend your whole life sometimes just studying just one subject in the scriptures, and still not be entirely convinced of. Uh, what God is saying. Amen. One example of that would be the end times, which is kind of what I'm reading here. I haven't read it yet, but we're going to get there. You have different groups and all these names, which you're not going to get into. And it just, the name means, I believe that this is what's going to happen um, regarding the end times. There are people who believe Jesus is going to physically, literally come back and rule on earth for a thousand years. Amen. There are people who don't believe that that's literal. That um, that, that thousand year period means the church um, in Jesus name. Uh, um, having dominion over the earth for a thousand years. And then it just gets... It just goes from there. There are people who believe the tribulation period is literally a seven-year period, but only the three and a half years. The second part of it is where all the bad stuff happens. I'm in that group. Amen. But even in that group, you got other groups. Some that say that the, the rapture, that Jesus is going to take the church away at the beginning of that second half, the three and a half years. I'm not in that group, but most of the people uh, that I know and love and go to church with are in that group. So what I'm saying is there are some challenging things in the Bible. We Predestination, um, um, literal creation, or uh, a metaphorical language used in the creation uh, regarding the first seven chapters of Genesis. There are groups and groups and groups, and it's not an automatic that when you meet someone who is a believer, and you're in one group and, and they're in another group, that it's like, well, I'm the true believer and you're the false one. Amen? It's not like that at all. There are some things, no matter how much context we have, we're just going to disagree about. And until Jesus returns and reveals to us what the truth was the whole time. Amen. 
And so that was a really long way of saying that there are legitimate disagreements among believers, but there are some things that are so far beyond the pale that uh, it's heresy and and we're not to tolerate it. We're not to have anything to do with it. And the only way you're going to know that is by studying the word yourself, surrounding yourself with people you can trust who have been studying this word for a very long time, being in a Bible believing, Bible teaching, uh, biblical inerrancy church. Amen. There's all kind of things you can do to ensure you're going to get the proper context and and you can pray to God this is critical asking him to give you the proper context of the word so here's my uh, example of taking something out of context that is acceptable amen and so I'm in the book of Mark and I'm in chapter 13 let me give you <laughs> my example of taking something out of context. And I immediately have to give you the context. So let me give you the context of what's happening here. This is all written in red. What's that mean? That means this is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, speaking. God bless his holy name. Um, he's given this pretty lengthy detailed explanation of what the end times is going to be like especially where we're going to be reading is the literal last days amen and he's speaking to uh peter james john and andrew and they had asked him in verse four tell us when will these things happen and what would a sign and what will be the sign when all these things are about to take place Amen. The scripture that uh, God really spoke to me recently about was in verse 24. It says, But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not shed its light. The stars will be falling from the sky, and the celestial powers will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power, power and glory. He will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the end of the earth and the end of the sky. So that's your Son of Man. That's talking about Jesus Christ. We know that uh, a little more context because that's the description Daniel uses in his prophetic book for Jesus. So we have this... Now, in my Bible, it, it kind of, uh, it took the text and centered it instead of having it left aligned, which is usually an indicator, probably always an indicator, that there's more context here. And, you know, a good Bible is going to have all these footnotes in it. Mine, for this, is in the middle. Let's see what it says. For mine, it says... See Isaiah chapter 13, verse 10. I did that before this video. And that is exactly <laughs> what the a, a good Bible is going to give you the context. Amen. It's going to have all these footnotes where you can jump around and really see what's being talked about. And what it shows there is that hundreds of years before Jesus ever walked the earth, uh, those exact words the sun will be darkened and the moon will not shed its light the stars will be falling from the sky and the celestial powers will be shaken are actually words of the prophet isaiah um in chapter 13 of the book of isaiah jesus is saying that isaiah was talking about uh jesus's return a future return and at the time that he's saying this he hadn't even been crucified yet amen so this gives you context you could use in Isaiah. Amen. Very important context. So you can go back to chapter 13 of Isaiah, read that whole chapter, and realize, at least for that portion, that he was talking about something far in the future. Amen. 
And it also gives you context for what Jesus is talking about right here. But, let's, uh, let's slow down for a second, and I want to share with you what, what God had spoken to me as I was reading this recently. Actually, I've read this many times in my life. I wasn't reading it. I was living my life in, uh, in this world that we live in. Uh, the scripture tells us, though we're no longer of this world, we're sent into it. Amen. Though we've been saved, we're still here. And it's not here to please ourselves. It's not here to live our best life now. We're here to reach other people that they may be saved as well. Amen? And I, I love science stuff. I'm not, I don't claim to be a, a scientist or a pseudo-scientist. I, I love space stuff. I mean, Paul on Mars is a reference to that a little bit. Um... I like the SpaceX stuff. I like, I like all this celestial. I like all that stuff. That's just me. I'm a big Star Trek guy, and uh, not Star Wars. Star Trek, and uh, we all have our own interests, our own things that uh, we like to study. And one of the things uh, you may not have ever heard about is called light pollution light pollution and um, when you see these photos of uh, stuff in space like the Hubble telescope or oh shoot I guess I should have uh, they got that new one the James Webb telescope and they got all these telescopes a lot of times what you're seeing an artist has come behind and taken the raw data and given an impression and it isn't an actual photo of what's out there in space. But sometimes it is. Especially when it's like a photo um, taken <coughs> a composite from Earth where they shoot many, many photos of the same area of the sky and then overlay them to give you that real detail and enhancement of the image. And one of the reasons they have to do that is because of light pollution. Light pollution is um, the light we create on Earth, uh, the lights from our homes, the lights from our industries and power plants, and the, the lights from all the electrical things we have created in the last hundred or so years. It just like this light right here. Let me see. That one. That light. Amen. It reflects and it, it creates a bioluminescence in the atmosphere. And what this does is it clouds our ability to see the bright lights of heaven. The Milky Way galaxy, the stars, constellations, all, all of that stuff that's out there in the night sky that um, our ancestors have been looking at since the dawn of time that the Apostle Paul was talking about in Romans chapter 1. All of that stuff is harder to see because of the light that man has created on the earth. Our light is preventing us from seeing the heavenly lights. Amen? Now, there are certain places on the earth, and they're easy to find because that's where we put all our most expensive telescopes, where there isn't a lot of uh, um, technological development. There isn't a lot of large populations creating this light pollution in the atmosphere. Amen? The darkest place on earth is the Canary Islands off of, I believe, Spain. And that's why we have some of our biggest, most important earth-based telescopes there. Because it's easier to see what's up in our sky in the heavenly bodies because we don't have all that light pollution that man has created. Now... 
this is something I was just, I mean, I've been aware of it for, for, for some time, but I was seeing a really good picture of the Milky Way galaxy that someone had taken. And I was kind of like, man, that picture is so awesome. <laughs> How come I can't see something like that? And it's really because of light pollution. And that's when God spoke to me about these verses that have been on my heart my whole life. I've read them so many times. And it really just drew me back to the Bible. I'm like, I got to go get my Bible and start reading about the heavenly lights and, and, and stuff like that. And God used that as like a draw to get me back into his word, amen, to get me back um, seeking him out. And guess what? It's out of context. I get it. But it spoke to me. It's not something, I think it's something that can speak to you. That as man moves away from God, amen, as man creates our own man-made wonders, our own glory, our own lights, that they can pollute us, amen, to where we can't see the true light, the eternal light. We can't see the wonders that God has made because we can't see out of our own atmosphere. We can't see through our own light pollution, amen? And we have to go to that dark place, that quiet place, that personal place where there isn't too many people around maybe uh i know my pastor likes to say it and i use the term on this channel a lot our quiet place amen where we can uh one on get one-on-one -on -one with god and let him say what he wants to say amen so that's totally out of context with these scriptures that i just read and we're going to get into the context of this i still got a little bit of time for this video but it, it's been profound for me. This last week, I've been excited to do this video because God has been using this um, to speak to me about uh, the light pollution of our own glory preventing us from seeing the true wonders of our Creator. Now, let's look at these verses right here. And these weren't the ver verses I originally went to. The ones I went to was talking, uh, um, uh, it was talking about, you can find this in, in a few places in the Bible, let's just say that. So it says, the part I want to focus on is the stars will be falling from the sky and the celestial powers will be shaken. Now right there, let's, Let's stop and ask ourselves about the context that the Bible gives us. One thing of note is that there's really like four different contexts here. When the Bible talks about stars, it sometimes is referring to angels, um, metaphorically. Uh, Satan is, one of his many names is this, uh, the morning star. So, there's sometimes it talks about Satan's fall um, and that he takes a third of the angels with him. Sometimes we have verses in Revelation talking about uh, the tail of, of the dragon knocking a third of the stars out of the sky. This is a context referring to angels, right? Now... Uh, another context we could have here is that the celestial bodies, this could, this could have a real world context, meaning nuclear winter is one of the things that it could be. Uh, if a bunch of, if World War III happened, um, which could happen with all this stuff going on in the Ukraine and Russia and China and Taiwan, um, the stage is being set for some of the events uh, that are, are so, um, the final events of this holy word taking place. If a bunch of nuclear bombs went off, that would devastate our environment. It doesn't matter where they went off. Uh, it would, it would fill our atmosphere with, with 
so much stuff that it would darken the sunlight, that the temperature of the earth would drop, that we wouldn't be able to see the stars in the sky because of how we've wrecked the environment with our nuclear weapons. It doesn't even have to be nuclear. This is historical. This has happened before with some great volcanic eruptions. They put so much trash in the atmosphere that it's like, uh, I think there was one year in the Middle Ages where it didn't matter where you were on the earth, the, the sunlight that reached the earth was greatly reduced because of all the volcanic ash that was in the atmosphere. So that's just another context you can have for uh, the stars falling from the sky. These are real contexts. And you've got to really do an in-depth Bible study to understand which context um, is correct for what you're talking about or what the Bible's talking about. And a lot of times you don't know. And so you got to be, for yourself, you got to admit that and you got to bear them all in mind. If you're preaching or talking to someone else, um, there may be one, like, let's talk about predestination really quickly. I'm a Molinist. Am I 100% certain of that? That Calvinism or Arminianism or something else isn't actually the truth rather than Molinism? I don't know. How convinced am I? I'm not going to put a number on that or a ratio. Um, but I lean in one direction more than the others. So if it comes up in a conversation, am I just going to pretend that those other contexts, uh, alternatives don't exist? I'm not saying I have to present everything in its entirety. I don't know everything in its entirety, hence... I'm making this video in the first place. No, but I can't just ignore it when I'm preaching or doing a Bible study with other people or doing one of these videos or having a conversation. I got to at least let the person know that, hey, I may be wrong here. You know, here's some alternative views that are out there. I've looked at them. I lean this way. I'll explain to you why I lean this way. It may be if you need more information that you got to go talk to someone else. That's the best way to handle uh, context when we get to these areas where not everyone's in agreement. Amen? And there will be times, you know, where you feel led to take something out of context. You have to say... And you have to know why you're doing it. And that was mine with the story about the the light pollution. I know that that's not what the Bible was talking about here. But it was like a layer that God had put on me, that he had prepared in me long ago, that he had prepared in this word as like a hook to just sink in and be like, hey, I want to get back to that Bible. I want to get back to God's word. And awesome power of God in doing that. I think it may have reached some people that uh, the story about our false light, our false glory. I'd like to think that that God would, that this thing he used in me wouldn't return void. Amen. And so is it in the context of the scripture? No, no, it wasn't. But I'm not building a ministry on this amen i'm not building some new hermeneutic on this amen i'm just using it in a way that could reach somebody and i'm also telling you that if you're going to get into this particular scriptures read it carefully amen let god speak to you use these uh, the notes on the side. And if you find yourself, maybe you're in a church, maybe you're watching videos of somebody else, maybe you're, you got someone talking to you. I don't know. And, and, and it ain't all jiving. Amen. And you starting to wonder if, 
if the context is all um, out of sorts. But you're going to have to look into that. It's, it's important, it's imperative that we do not um, keep ourselves in a, if God is leading us, revealing to us that our views are wrong, or that the views of those around us are wrong, we're not supposed to stay there. Amen. God is always leading us to his light, leading us to his knowledge, leading us to his glory. And in that process, there's a whole lot of revelation, personal revelation, where you just like with God drawing me back to his word with this, you know, that whole drawing me back required me to say, why was I not that close to him uh, recently as I should have been in the first place? Why did he have to draw me? Why was that distance there? Amen. There's a whole lot of repentance. There's a whole lot of, of growing up. There's a whole lot of, you know what, God, thank you for being so loving and forgiving. I need that. Thank you for drawing me back. I need that. Thank you for having this in your word that when I was studying this thing with um, um, the celestial bodies that you were able to use that to speak to me and to draw me back to you. Amen? And so, context matters. Hermeneutics matters. Being honest matters. We don't know everything. We can't. It's okay to just teach what you do know, to share what you do know, so long as you're being honest, that there are people you respect, uh, there are views that have been out there for a very long time that may be true, truer than your view, and um, that's okay. It's real dangerous, though, when we're out of context and we build our whole ministry, our whole belief system on things out of context. Because at the end of the day, what you end up with is your own ministry, your own gospel your own jesus your own heresy so with that i'm going to close this with a prayer holy father in jesus name i thank you for your holy word i thank you for the people who have watched this today i thank you that your holy spirit moves that your holy spirit acts that your holy spirit draws and compels and speaks i thank you that um that, Lord, you have uh, used your word so profoundly for so long, for thousands and thousands of years. I pray that anyone who's watching this, hearing this, um, that you would speak to them, that you would draw them to study your word, to take it seriously. As your word says, these things speak, uh, exhort, and reprove with all authority. Let no one disregard you. I pray that everyone would take that calling seriously. Um, that when it's time to repent, we repent. When it's time to move forward, we move forward. I pray that you would bless everyone today. All these things and more, I pray in Jesus' holy, holy, holy name. I pray that you would use Paul and Mars ministry to do things that Paul and Mars can't do. In Jesus' holy, holy name, amen. Thank you for watching this video. Um, I think I was a little rusty, haven't haven't done the ministry on my YouTube channel as much as I should have been doing. So that's going to change. Keep watching. Have a blessed day. Amen.